Good morning, Floss Tube friends. I am Shelly, and this is my channel, Proverbs 3122. Um, if you're new, I um, welcome you. <laughs> um, this is my channel about cross stitch and some quilting and sewing type um, crafts. Do tatting occasionally, but not a whole lot. Um, but anyway, if you are a new visitor, new subscriber, I have had a few new subscribers uh, recently, so um, I hope you like what you see and that you'll um, stick around. Hit the like, bu like button if you like what you see. Um, if you are returning to hang out with me, um, hey, good to see every see everybody today. I wish that we could like meet in real life, but this will have to do for, for now. Anyway, today is um, Tuesday, December the 1st, 2020, and it's cold here today, the last couple of days in Rogersville. Um, not sure what the current temperature is. Let's see. Currently 37 in Rogersville. So, um, if you've been around for a little while, you might be wondering uh, what I'm doing home. It is 10:20 um, in the morning. What I'm doing home on a Tuesday morning. Um, the blows from 2020 just keep coming at us. So, if you're new, you don't know, but um, until October the 26th, I had worked for an urgent care clinic, and it was so stressful. I mean, just beyond stressful for me, and it was something that I really didn't feel was, you know, it didn't fit my personality at all. So I had an opportunity that came up to work for a clothing manufacturer, and I took it and started like I said, on October 26th. Um, so on November 25th, which was the day before Thanksgiving, um, the whole company got furloughed. <laughs> so I am currently without a job. Hoping um, that they get some work and we get called back. Because honestly, um, I was really settling into it and really liking it. I mean, you know, yeah, it had frustrations, but I mean, I was sewing all day long. Um, and it was a great schedule. Um, not really, you know, any stress. I mean, I did have some things that were um, kind of kicking my butt, but you know, was trying to find ways to make it go better. And, you know, I just was really, really loving the job. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we were pretty much all in shock when they, like they let us go early on Wednesday at 1.30 instead of 3.30. And, you know, the CEO basically said, you know, good news is, you get to go home at 1.30 today, you'll be paid through 3.30. Bad news is, um, don't come back to work until further notice. <sighs> so, um, I've started a claim with unemployment, which has been, I don't know, just a little bit of an aggravation, not too bad, but you know, I called Wednesday afternoon and got the process started, and I called to do the claim because with it being a furlough, I wasn't really, like, I wasn't sure how I needed to do it, and so I figured if I called and got someone on the phone that they would be able to help me and guide me, you know, well, a girl sounded like she was about 18 years old. She talked a mile a minute. I keep ha kept having to... Um, ask her to repeat herself, um, you know, can you please talk slower? So, 
when I went in to certify my hours, you know, I had worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so I certified my hours and it gave me a little message saying that there was a potentially disqualifying error or event or something like that to call the 1-800 number. So, you know, this all um, happened over Thanksgiving, you know, holiday weekend, whatever. So yesterday I called the 1-800 number, couldn't get anybody on the phone, and they basically just said, you know, high, f higher than normal call volumes currently, try your call again later. So there is um, like a, it's part of the unemployment system in Alabama, but it's like an employment center that um, is in one of the neighboring towns near where we live. So I called that office to see if they could kind of clarify information for me. And at first they were like, you know, well, we're not the unemployment division, we're the employment division, you know, but let me look at it for you. So she pulled it up and um, because I had only worked a month for the company that I'm with, you know, they pay their unemployment taxes quarterly. So it wasn't showing in my list of employers. And when I called on Wednesday, I gave the girl all of the information. And instead of adding a new employer, she basically chose um, <laughs> one of my previous employers to file the claim under two employers ago. And I don't know if she just, you know, because the new company, like the it's on point manufacturing is the factory, but it's under performance healthcare products is the name of the company. And she just chose Heart Health Center from my list of previous employers instead of adding a new one. So anyway, the girl that I talked to locally got it all fixed and refiled a claim and was emailing them and seeing, you know, if they could just basically cancel the one that I filed on Wednesday. And of course, it'll take four weeks, you know, up to four weeks for them to even process the claim and start paying me, you know, the little piddly amount that you get paid. Uh, but it's better than nothing. So anyway, that's what's going on with us. We do have um, also a couple of family members back in Louisiana who have contracted COVID, uh, one of them being my mother-in-law, who is... She's 30 years older than me, so she's 85 years old and has, you know, underlying issues. So we're, of course, concerned and um, just praying that, you know, she has a mild case and everything's okay. So that's what's going on with us. And pray for us. <laughs> Just pray for us. I really don't want to have to find a job in another, you know, doing anything else because I really, really liked what I was doing. Sort of kicking around, you know, things that I can do at home. You know, every time I post a quilt, you know, people want to know, do you sell your quilts? You know, could I sell some quilts? Um, I'd have to machine quilt them on my home sewing machine and... It's just not something that I'm really good at or really uh, like doing, but kind of kicking that around. So just pray for, pray for us, pray for direction, pray for our relatives that are contracted COVID. Okay, enough of all of that. We are here for stitching, the fun stuff, right? <laughs> So, um, I have one, you know, today's December 1st, so if you've been here for a while, you've seen this already, but I did pull out my December, um, year of celebrations piece. Um, this is a pattern by Hands-On Design. When you get the pattern, <coughs> excuse me, when you get the pattern, you get, um, all 12 plus two Canadian, um, themed pieces if you live in Canada. And this is my finish of December.
when I took this out and put it on a row eyes like this. Basically, I just mounted it sort of crooked. <laughs> I think this might have been, I think this was my second, like, FFO, so. Anyway, that's a, that's a finish that I have for you. Don't have any other finishes. Um, have a lot of whips. Have one new start. And um, some haul, some shout out, and we're going to talk about some plans. So one of the main things that I've been working on and um, been sharing is a sow that I'm doing. Um, it lives in this little um, project bag that I made myself with the same fabric that's on the bulletin board behind me. I had a piece of it left, but anyway, this is the... Um, the Live Simply Mystery Sew so Stitch Along, not Sew so Along, uh, Stitch Along, um, and this is available on Etsy with Bluebird, the Bluebird Needleworks. And um, last time I was working on getting the outer border done and getting the second to last motif done, and I did um, accomplish those things. So. This was the, the last piece that was released. We got the new um, the new piece today released on her Instagram page. I haven't uh, checked my email to see if I have the file yet, but it's so cute. I'm going to show you a picture of it in a minute. But yeah, this is my my interpretation of this pattern. Um, this is stitched on a um, 32 count out Linen in the color Sun Shower. It is, this is, I mean, it never, it never ever photographs or videos true to color. It is a very um, light lemon yellow, um, much brighter than what it shows on camera. Uh, I chose, I did some of the call for colors, but I chose some of my own as well. Um, just to brighten it up because I'm a, I'm a bright color comp girl. Of course, I do really like the ones that I'm seeing, people that are stitching it with more traditional colors. Um, it's cute. I mean, it's beautiful too. Um, so yeah, I've just got that one piece, the one, um, one final, oops, um, one final piece to stitch and then that that border around that final piece but um, I'm loving this piece a lot and I love how she added the, the poinsettias you know on that second to last block so um, the last block she showed the picture today on uh, Instagram is this. Isn't that so cute? So pretty. So this is a uh, Eurasian blue tit bird. And it's a cousin of the uh, chickadee here in, in the States. So this... Um, I love birds. I love flowers. So this has just been a true uh, joy to work on. And I've loved every minute of it. So I'm looking forward to having it um, having it finished. And I uh, went around my house the other day. I have like a lot of um, prints from home interiors from back, you know, in the 80s and 90s. And um, basically, I went around my house and saw what size frame, which one was the right size frame for this piece. Because I mean, I'm just gonna mount it on, mount it on some uh, mounting board, and um, I don't know if I'll put any fabric behind it or just either pop it in the frame or just attach it to the front of the frame. So yeah. Love it. I'm going to show it one more time because I love it so much. Yeah. 
Maybe YouTube will pick that for the screenshots. Jeez, they always pick the silliest, the silliest shots. Okay. Um, the other main thing that I've been working on. Oh dear. Dear, dear, dear. This is my client piece. And I could have sworn I had it right here, but now I can't find it. So hopefully it'll turn up before I finish this video. So anyway, we'll move along to other things. So, um... Since I finished this uh, Live Simply, um, you know, caught up on it, and uh, I've been picking whips to work on. And one of those was, um, and I don't have a picture of this pattern, but it's it's Doreen Jones's um, Garden Sal that is free on her Facebook page and I'll link below whatever I'll talk about but I did do a little bit on that first little square I've got the border partially done and then um, I had done the I had done this part of this birdhouse previously I'll just pin this on here real quick I didn't press everything, so. Um, I did the little bird. I wanted to make it a bluebird, but then when I was stitching it, I sort of forgot that I wanted to do that. So I had done it in, I wanna say one of these pink colors that's on the flowers, and it just really sort of blended in with my house. So I went ahead and just ripped it out and redid the bird. That's a little birdhouse. I've got a little bit more to do on the little plants. And then there's like a little border that goes around, a little cross-stitch border. I'm really kind of, I don't know, I, I had to pull it up because I was like, this just doesn't look like it's going to be big enough to fit every part that she's got. But I think it, I think it will. But um, I'm stitching this on a piece of 22 count. Um... I don't remember the brand. It's they sell it at Michaels. I think it's hoops and needles or something. Or I don't remember the brand. But anyway, it was just a piece. Just a cheap piece of twenty-two count. I'm stitching it with um, my own choices of DMC. Um, two threads over, two strands over two threads, two linen threads. And that project lives in a. Um, dot dot goose project bag which looks like this I love this this fabric and so I don't I don't often buy project bags but I really love that fabric so I went ahead and picked one up okay um I'll stitch just a little bit on um Elizabeth Weston and I did notice something when I got done stitching the part that I stitched and I had to reach out to uh, Hands Across the Sea this this fabric is mass, massive so I always have a hard time finding my spot so I got done um, stitching this leaf right here and can you see that it's not balanced from one side to the other so when you look at the pattern um, when you look at the pattern there's that extra little um, Show you on the like on the sample you don't see it 
see how it just it looks balanced basically there's four it's supposed to be four spaces in between and there is on every other leaf in the pattern at least I think so I hadn't really looked at the pattern that close but on this leaf there's an extra stitch so you know it's a reproduction sampler so yeah I wasn't sure I mean the reproductions they'll you know chart it according to how the the usually little girl did it um and you can either you know choose to do it that way or not do it that way and I'm not really I'm not like a purist where I feel like I have to do it exactly how she did it but what threw me was that you know when you look at the model that extra stitch is not there so I reached out to them and they said, um, let's see. So she said, um, so she said she checked the leaf out on the original and the chart is correct. It's the only one like it, but there's no reason why the stitcher can't make it the same as the others. So I think I'm going to take it out because it bugs me. Um, it just, you know, as soon as I got done stitching it, it was like, this doesn't look right. <laughs> and so, you know, when she left it off when she was stitching the sample, and it was Sandra who stitched the sample. So, I think I'm going to take it out. I mean, I don't know if it really matters. You know, I might stitch some more on it, so stitch some more leaves and see if it still bugs me or not. But, anyway. That lives in a um, one of the gingham on the go tote bags from Fat Quarter Shop, and those come in a set of three, I believe. That's the medium size one. I did just a little bit of um, little bit of stitching on my Patchwork Autumn. I really wanted to have this finished. Um, but, you know, before fall this year, but it just didn't happen. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 28 count, um, Monaco. The color is tea dyed. And I'm using most of the call for DMC flosses, except for I am doing um, this outer border and then the little squirrels and some of the motifs on the inside with um, two sulky threads. So I just added a little bit more on this branch since last time you saw it, I believe. And that just lives in a... Um, one of these little tote bags oh my god I'm sorry I showed the pattern um hopefully you couldn't see it very well through the bag but this lives in just just one of these project bags from Amazon I think they come in like a set of 10 or so um and then in this project bag that I made um that was another idea that I had to make money is to maybe sell some project bags. Because, you know, Lord knows I have gobs and gobs of fabric <clears throat> to make some. Um, I don't think I would make them with the vinyl fronts. I would just make them, you know, sort of like, sort of like this. I could do the, do some that have binding around them but these are just so easy and quick to put together so let me know what you think so this is my bluebird of happiness from uh, cottage garden samplings and I just got a little bit of progress on it since the last time you saw it just did a 
started on the next little flower. I did try um, up here, I kind of kicked around the idea of maybe doing one over one. Because, <clears throat> you know, I told, told you last time that I had started out doing two strands over two um, threads. And I didn't like the way it looked. So I went down to one strand of floss. And I do like it better than I like the two. But I, I kind of want to just try, wanted to try to see, you know, what one over one would look like on this cloth. And I don't know if this is really, I didn't like it, but I don't know if it's, I feel like you have to do like, I would have to do like a whole flower or something to really get a feel for how, whether or not I like that. But I really didn't feel like doing that, so I just kept going with the one over the one strand of thread over two two linen threads. Now, I really feel like this is gonna be it goes pretty fast. So if you know if I dedicated time to work on it, I don't think it would take very long. And you know, I'm gonna have a lot of time to stitch until I find a job. Oh, here's my client piece. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So this is the piece that I'm working on for my client. I'm hoping to have this done by the 15th of this month. And this is, um, well, other than my little new start that I started the day after Thanksgiving, this is kind of predominantly what I've been working on. The last week or so. I'm trying out this new, um, this is a board that I use. It's like an ironing, an ironing, um, pressing board that I use on, next to my sewing machine. I mean, I have the little um, design boards, but they're small on the smaller side. So this is Little Pond. So I've got um, to do the back stitching on the giraffes and the grass around them. I've got to finish that little um, centerpiece of the greenery. I don't understand why it's so hard to do directions when you're filming. <laughs> it's sort of annoying. So I've got a, I'm working on this part right here, right now. Um, then I've got to do the little elephants. And I realized, um, I think last night, this cloth is blue. And so part of the mama elephant's face is not stitched. It's just the background. No, it's actually the baby elephant's face. It's just the background fabric. So um, those areas of greenery, they, you know, seem like it's not a lot of stitching, but it's a lot of color changes, and they just sort of all blend in together. So um, they're a little bit of a booger <laughs> to stitch. So... Quite a bit of back stitching, and then you know the elephant, and then the greenery. So I'm, I'm, you know, sort of estimated how long I thought it would take me to do each part, and sort of mapped out, you know. And this was all before I, you know, got laid off. So um, I feel confident that I can get it done by the fifteenth. <clears throat> It's a really, really cute piece. I don't have, I, all I did was um, the back stitches on the little ladybug, not the back stitches, the um, French knots. Not real crazy about them. <sighs> Thought about asking the client if she wanted if I did beads for the, for the French knots. 
but some of these, you know, I mean, beads on a little ladybug might get kind of, it might be too, they might be too large. I don't know. Might not be enough um, space to put them. So I don't know. I guess I just need to practice my French knots. Because practice makes perfect, right? Uh, Jan Hicks did do a uh, tutorial on Colonial Knot. Um, don't know that it's really any, you know, I don't know that I can do it any better than I can do a French Knot, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so... Um, I had made this, the Mary Jar, my lunchtime um, stitch in the car at lunchtime piece. And that was, I was working on that week before last. And thought, you know, was hoping that I could maybe get it done, but I didn't. But I'm so close. So close. Um, I'm off on this side. I'm off on um, on this side, and so I kind of had to fudge, which these are real easy to fudge things on, you know, because it's sort of just it's just greenery. It's not like it really depends on things being um, precise. So um, I've got more of the green to do down here and then the red to do. And then I realized that I didn't finish this little motif up here. So that's probably not gonna get done before Christmas. Um, this is a hands-on design collaboration with Priscilla, Bl Priscilla Blaine, uh, of the Real House Housewives of Crosstitch. And it's uh, part of a club kit that I did with Fat Quarter Shop. So it's on 14 count. Uh, ch chalkboard Black Ada with the call for classic color works and gentle arts threads. And it lives in a Amazon project bag. <clears throat> I'm probably going to eventually, you know, slowly replace all of those because I find that um, I guess, I don't know how to describe it. <clears throat> it feels like they're getting uh, weak in some spots and maybe about to rip in some spots. Especially with ones that I guess I've used more than others. I don't know. Um, so my, my lunchtime stitch in the car piece for last week which ended up only being three days I mean it would have been three days anyway because we were all Thursday and Friday regardless was um, Fat Quarter Shops Bloomtopia which I am um, working on the border So I've got about a fourth of the border done. And this is on um, 14 count Ada that I picked up at Joann's and this is called Light Seafoam. And I'm using the call for DMC flosses except for the lighter blue. Um, it did blend in with my back, my fabric so I substituted this um, DMC um, 211 221 which one is it 210 so um, it needed some purple anyway so <laughs> happy um, happy need of changing colors. I love this piece so much. So cute. 
course it's gonna it'll get put away for a little while. You know, you think that you can get so much done. Like I was thinking, yeah, I could get that I could get a big chunk of that border done by lunchtime. Stitching, nope. It's a lot of um, color changes. So um, this is in a little tote that I made. Um, a little project bag. It was it was in a um, Fat Quarter Shop sew sampler box, and it basically gave you enough material to make two bags. If I had thought about it. Um, now, if I've had a time, I would have just gone ahead and made, like, a larger one. But, I mean, I still like these. They're good for, like, small little projects. Which I need to incorporate more small projects so I can get some finishes. I do have some smalls that I'm planning to do this month that I'll talk about in a few minutes and plans. So, I also worked a little bit on the um, linens and Linen and Threads um, Mystery Sal for 2020, which they just released the final piece of this um, yesterday. And they, um, what I did on it was um, I, finished, I finished this motif down here. And the last time you saw it, it had 2020 in here. And I went in and just did back stitch um, and did my dad's um, name and year and year of birth and year of death. I am going to go back though and change. I'm going to rip that out and do redo it. In the I decided to do the initials. I started putting the initials in the piece and I decided to use just a solid color purple instead of the variegated so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back um, into this piece take the back stitching off and redo it in the dark purple so that it just stands out more So, um, the J is for Jesus. Um, the HM is my paternal grandmother. Um, and G is my maternal grandmother, her husband. This is my, pretty sure this is my mom. I wasn't sure, and I'm, I'm questioning who that is because my daughter's, my older daughter's married name is, her initials are KB as well. So I decided to do them, like the females to do married names. And my mom, she was married three times, but, you know, her, her surviving spouse when she passed was his last name started with a B. So I'm pretty sure that's, um, that is her. Like, I was just sort of, I don't know, just sort of thinking about... And it doesn't really matter, but the order, you know, of how I was doing things in. And then I think this, pretty sure, I probably should make notes because it's going to be so long between and when I work on them. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be my stepdad who was married to my mom when she passed. Because it's a C and then his last initial is B. So, yeah, I didn't really... I don't know, just some, a little bit of angst on the initials, but isn't it gorgeous? I love the, I love the flosses and I love seeing everybody's that are doing different colors and stuff, but I just cannot, 
like when they, you know, do this motif, like they are able to see, you know, that this is like branches. When I look at the pattern, I cannot see that. So I would have had a really hard time and I may get better, you know, future ones. Um, I love this piece a lot. And as it goes along, it just looks more and more beautiful. So maybe I'll have a finish on that next year. Was hoping to keep it caught up, but you know how that goes. Sorry, I bumped you a little bit. So that's all that I worked on that I already had started. Um, and I really wasn't planning to start anything new, but, um, I had been wanting to try the Cosmo floss. And last time I believe I showed the floss that I got for the Bonnie and Camille stitch along that's going to happen next year. But um, I kind of wanted to, this came up just as a recent offering from Fat Quarter Shop. And so... I didn't want to wait to try Cosmo, so I went ahead and picked this up. So this is, um, I don't have a picture of the, the pattern, but I'm almost done with it. So it's um, Jan Hicks Creates. Um, she's got So Thankful on the pattern pages. But everything on Fat Quarter Shop says thankful. So I'm not sure of the official title, but you can get the pattern PDF. And she only does PDF. You can get it either through her website, which is madforyarn.net, I believe. Or you can get it from Fat Quarter Shop. They, when I looked this morning, because someone was asking me on one of my Facebook groups, um, they were asking me about the floss, so I was curious to see if they had any available. It is out of stock, and it does come from Japan, so who knows when they'll have it back in. But um, I think this floss pack was like $6, so, and this will be part of my haul too, but... Um, so I got the floss pack, I got the pattern, and I got um, some of Lori Holt's uh, Lugana to stitch it on. And this is what I've gotten done so far. So I started stitching on this the day after Thanksgiving, and it was pretty much, this is all that I stitched on over the weekend. I was really hoping I could get it finished, but um, it didn't happen, so, but... Um, I'm, I'm close. I think I have a few, um, there may be, I think there's some more, um, uh, branches and greenery over here. And then, like, I got some fill in to do on the border and then to finish the border and then fill in. So, and it goes, the border goes really fast because it's just repetitive until you get to the corners. And then you don't have to fill in the whole thing either. Like only certain squares are filled in. I love, I love it. I think it's so pretty. It's going to have, um, it'll say thankful. It's like turned sideways right here. Um, these are the flosses. Is that not gorgeous? Look at those fall colors. So, um, I've been watching Jean Farish Needleworks on YouTube. She uses Cosmo Floss exclusively. She did um, talk about, like, she does her floss on the little, the little thread drops, like I do. Um, I usually don't leave them this long. I usually do shorter pieces, but 
I was watching it the other day and she was saying that when she's not working on a project, she does this with her ends of her floss just to sort of keep them from getting um, tangled and knotted up. So I left these longer just to try that. I don't know if I really notice a difference, but um, I do like the longer pieces, especially with these that are um, non-variegated because you can do loop method, method if you're doing two strands. Um, and if you are doing a variegated floss and you leave the, the pieces longer like this, you can always just cut the strands in half, um, you know, and use each half. You wouldn't use like each half together, but you could, you know, take two strands off, cut each one in half, and then put the top half and the bottom half together to do your stitches. Um, so this is two strands of floss on a, um, like I said, it's a Lori Holtz, um, Lugana. Uh, it's a, her vintage cloth, 25 count in the color cloud. So I got, you know, the pattern, the floss, and that cloth. The cloth is, her cloth is kind of pricey, but I just kind of wanted to try it. Um, I want to say this was, oh, maybe $30, something, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, of course, you know, that was before I got laid off, so... And I don't have a project bag for it, so I'll just sort of put it in this bag that the thread came in. I'm out of project bags, and I'm not planning on doing the no new starts in 2021 or anything like that, but I've, um, you know, a lot of people are doing that, and so, you know, they're starting as many things as they can before the first of the year. I'm not doing that, but I do have some plans coming up um, that I probably need to make some project bags just because I got some stuff I want to start. I like starting stuff. I like stitching on stuff too, though. <laughs> I don't like finishing stuff, so it does get a little like I'll have that, you know, too many whips but whatever okay so that's all my um stitching that I've been working on so I do have some haul um I haven't gotten my Victorian motto floss for November yet I did get an invoice from her yesterday for December and I wrote and just told her that I had to cancel it because I got laid off so It's disappointing, but it is what it is. So, um, <clears throat> I did get that pin. I do have a piece, you know, it's an 18 by 27 piece, and I cut off a 12 by 14 for that Jan Hicks piece. So, I still have a good little piece of that left. Um, I got my. Um, I haven't been doing any quilting. I've got to do some motifs on my daughter's quilt, you know, the hand quilting it. Um, and I just haven't felt like it, but you know, I'm gonna have a lot of stitching time on my hands. But I did get um, my fabrics in for the fourth block. I think it's fourth. Yes, yeah, my floor, right there. Holiday Cheer is the name of the block. Um, I've got them starched, and I'm going to cut them either today or tomorrow. But these are the fabrics. Isn't that so cute? I love her. I love Corey Yoder's designs. 
I love, love, love this check. I was looking through the, the pattern book to see, oh, it's just the background, to see when, how often the, the different colors of that check comes in and how often it's used. It's used a couple of times in the quilt and I don't think it's, it doesn't look bad on this one, but um, let's see. This is the book, and I noticed on one of the other ones is like, whoo, I have to be careful how I cut that because the way they cut this <laughs> for the block and the book is like it would bug me because it's it's off kilter. Let's see. Right here. Do you see like right here how that is like just that would make me crazy so I may have to either I don't know have to really pay attention to how I'll put that together or I might have to um, either use a different fabric there or use part of it the check and then part of it something else because that would bug me to death. Sorry if you hear my dog. I don't know what he's barking at, but he barks at just about everything that is nothing. <laughs> um, okay, so um, what else did I get? Okay, so I got, I think I showed this last, I think I showed this pattern last time, I'm not sure, but anyway, there's a stitch along that's starting the first of the year, um, it's called New Year, New Start, New Friends, Sal, and I love this pattern. Like, even if there wasn't a stitch along, I would definitely want to do this pattern. So, I think I did show you because I think I talked last time about um, the fact that I had some graceful gray, maybe. And it was 28 count. So, I had bought flosses from Cobweb Corner. And then when I started looking at the pattern, you know, it's stitched on a, it's stitched on a 36 count. Um, yes, 36 count with one strand. So I was like, if I do this on a 28 count, of course now I like one strand on 28, but at that moment, I hadn't discovered that yet, I think. I don't know. I'm confusing myself. Anyway, I decided, you know, if I do it on a lower count and have to use two strands, I'm going to run out of thread. So I went online on Etsy. Dangerous, dangerous place. And um, found someone who had who had some fabric and also had, there was a couple of, um, a couple of colors of floss that were not available anywhere. And this shop on Etsy had them. And now I'm not seeing one of them. So I believe I got all of these from Cobweb Corner. It was olive and olive and sage. Okay, here's the olive. Okay. So it was these that I got from Cobweb Corner. 
better for, for the chart. And then, like I was just a few dollars away from um, getting free shipping with her. And Cobweb Corner is fantastic. If you haven't visited Cobweb Corner, definitely check them out because they ship super fast and they have stuff that sometimes other stores don't have. Um, anyway, I was just a few dollars away from free shipping, so I'll just throw another floss. And this is great pie. So, um, it's but she didn't have two of the colors. And I thought I probably could substitute, but I wonder what it called for. <laughs> so I went to, um, let's see, Dames of the Needle from the Cauldron on Etsy. And they are in Atlanta area, Georgia. Um, they had the olive, and they had a sage, but I realized after I placed the order that the sage that I ordered was from the wrong company, and it wasn't quite the right color. So, like the sage is used on this, um, the female cardinal's breast. So, um, and it's supposed to be, it was supposed to be weeks. And I think what I ordered was gentle, the gentle art. So once I realized, I uh, hurry up and emailed, messaged her and said, you know, what I need is weeks sage. But I looked in her shop and she didn't have the sage, but she did have dried sage, which I thought you know, part of this will work, like, not the lighter colored green, but the, the more gray green will work on the, on the bird's breast, and if it doesn't, I'll do something else, but anyway, I messaged her and said, you know, hey, I, I realized that I ordered the wrong one, so I need either dried sage from weeks or sage, preferably if you have the sage, well, she didn't have the sage, so I got the dried sage, but uh, while I was in there, um, I went ahead and got a different color fabric. Not a different color, a different count. I mean, it is a different color, but it's a 36 count um, platinum, which I thought was pretty close. Pretty close to um, that call for. Maybe a little lighter, but I'm okay with that. Um, and so these are the flosses and the fabric that I will do it on. So the conch is what the house is. Oh, I feel like I'm fumble fingers. I don't know if y'all heard my stomach <laughs> growling a minute ago, but I'm sort of hungry and sort of feeling like my blood sugar's kind of getting low. But but anyway, it looks not quite... Like when you look at the skein, it doesn't look as pink as the house looks on this. But I think once you start stitching, I think it looks... I think it's going to look... It's going to look good. So while I was in their shop, I think they also had like a minimum amount to uh, that you had to order to qualify for free shipping. I don't know about y'all, but I just soon spend what I would spend on shipping on products. So <clears throat> I looked around in their their um their shop and they had this piece of 36 count it's called Santa's Cocoa I don't have any idea what I'm gonna stitch on it but I just think it's gorgeous it's I mean it's a brown it's cocoa but it has just that little bit of like 
purpleness to it, burgundiness. I love it. It's kind of a small piece, but I want to say it was like maybe $9. So I snapped that up. So I have all of my stuff now ready for uh, Winter Rose Manor. So I really want it. She's got um, Brenda Gervais on her site. She's got um, a project bag panel with this like printed on it. I would love that, but, you know, now I definitely can't get it. It was out of stock when I first thought about buying it, and now it's back in stock, and I got laid off, so I can't get it. But i got to stitch up something to, to put that in. Okay, so I had a few colors of DMC that I needed, and so I went to Joanne. And this was all that I needed was floss. So I just uh, got my X-Stitch app out and sort of just sort of go started going down my list of the numbers and the ones that I didn't have. I just picked up, you know, a handful just to, I mean, it was like an $8. Just, just to do it, just to have those colors. Because, you know, I really, I like the Cosmo floss. Um, but I can't say that it's like that much more fantastic than DMC that I would want to. It is more expensive than DMC, so I'm not going to, um, you know, I mean, I might use it occasionally on projects, but it's not like I'm going to, because at first, you know, listening to Gene Farish rave about it, it's like, maybe I want to just like ditch DMC and transfer over to Cosmo, but I don't think that's going to happen. So, let's see. Um, yesterday, my thread from Russia finally arrived. This thread is <laughs> all over. It actually, it like made it into Queens, New York. It made it to Atlanta. It went to Birmingham, like I think the day before Thanksgiving, maybe. It went to Birmingham, so I was thinking, oh, good, it's, you know. And then the next thing, it went back to Atlanta. Like, why? Like, it went to Atlanta, Birmingham, back to Atlanta, back to Birmingham, then the Huntsville, then to me yesterday. So, um... Let me get the, the pattern out and the fabric, and then I'll show you the flosses also. So this is for um, the Hummingbirds chart from Owl Forest Embroidery. So I have the PDF chart. I ordered the ice blue um, linen from Holly um, Hobby House Needlework. Is that the name of it? I think so. There, you'll see them. I mean, they're always advertising on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and I always link everything in the bottom, in the description box below. So the only thing that I was waiting for was their hand-dyed um, flosses. And they came yesterday. And oh my word. Look at those colors. Is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? Lord have mercy on my soul. God. I mean, come on, y'all. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Another thing I want to start. Might maybe... maybe. Christmas Day start? Might do it. Okay. <laughs> um, also, I did purchase some other things on Etsy. 
because uh, Jan Hicks Creates shared the shop and they were having a sale. Did I already show these? I think maybe I already showed these. But I have them on my list, so I don't know. Usually, like, when I I have a, um, a form that I use to plan my floss tube. And so when I've filmed one, you know, then I, everything that happens from that point forward, when it happens, I go and write it on this list. And so I have the pre, I have it three PDFs from Stitches Through the Years on Etsy. So I think maybe I didn't show these. But, so this is one. Her stuff is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love this one. I think I want to do this one like real soon. The simpler my life, the happier I become. So true. And This one, I've seen Shiloh with X, X Stitch MD stitching this and knew I just absolutely, you know, it was like bucket list. Do y'all hear my stomach? <laughs> okay, I'm like, need to go eat. So this is, um, Sampler Hope, and it's got the um, the quote from Emily Dickinson: "Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul, and sings the tune without the words, and never never sighs at all, never stops at all." Sorry, y'all. Um. This is, this is beyond, beyond gorgeous. Of course, I love the colors. I think that's really, you know, a big part of what drew me in. And I want to say this is maybe the first project that Shiloh on X-Stitched MD used variegated overdyed flosses for. Um... And, you know, she's been hooked ever since. And it's got some, um, it's got some beading on it. Let's see. I mean, just look at it. It's just gorgeous to me. So I'll purchase those three PDFs from that shop um, when she had her sale going. Um, that's all my haul. That's all my haul. Um, I did have a little bit of stitchy kindness that came yesterday. And this is from uh, Jenny. The long dog stitcher. She's my neighbor down the road in Madison, Alabama. Um, she stitches a lot of long dog samplers and she's holding one there and they're gorgeous. So if you haven't visited her channel, she's she's a good one to visit. A good one to check out. Um, also, um, a new one that I started watching is Cassie Joe Stitches. Um, she's only got, I think, like six videos at this point, so it'd be easy to sort of catch up on her if you like to watch from the beginning. I do. Um, I've kind of let that go a little bit. Like, you know, I get behind and it's like I just can't go back and catch up. I just have to just jump in wherever someone is at this point in time. Um, if you've not subscribed or seen uh, Jan Hicks Creates, or if you have and you haven't visited her channel in a while, you want to make sure to visit this month because 
She started the day after Thanksgiving, and she's doing, I think it's going to be like maybe two weeks worth, 12 to 14 days worth of um, giveaways daily. Um, it's her holiday extravaganza. So, so far she's given away um, one of her son's artwork pieces. I'm trying to think what day one was. I don't remember. Um, she's given away a little um, Kelly Stadota. That's so Kelly. Little Bitsy Bob package. Oh, day one was um, from Deborah Harry. Um, I don't know if I've shared about her before, but she has a shop on Etsy where she rescues like old um, embroidery pieces and cross-stitch pieces, and she turns them into bags. So day one was she gave away two of those bags. Day two was the artwork. Day three was um, the Baroque sampler from the Silk app. And then yesterday was the Kelly's um, That's So Kelly Little Bitsy Bob package which the winner for that will be announced today. And then she'll, you know, announce the giveaway for today as well. So you definitely want to check that out. Um, something else that I discovered today, someone on uh, the Shannon Christine um, cross-stitch group shared a site called fabricviewer.com. And they don't have a whole lot of designers and a whole lot of dyers, but they do have some, and Shannon Christine is one of them. Um, Be Stitch Me is one of the dyers that they have. But basically, you can go in and choose the designer's design that you're thinking about stitching, and then you can pull in the dyer's different fabrics and see what that design looks like on the fabric. It's fabulous. Like, let's see if I still have it up. Viewer. So they cleared out what I had earlier. But you basically, um, like, let me select Shannon Christine. She's got this new design. Um, now I'm not going to remember what. Um, I don't remember what's the, the name of her new pattern, but let me just pull up the one that I'm working on from her, which is Craft Room. So this is the just, you know, the artwork of the design. And then you go into um, the fabrics, and I'm going to select a dyer, and I'm just going to select Be Stitch Me because I like brandy stuff. And so I can choose, you can choose up to three things that you want to see the design on. Let's see here. Just there. So it put it on three things that I chose. Look at that on that purple. Of course, I'm doing a purple sewing machine, so um, now let's see. Okay. And then that's like, I just chose like, you know, whatever, just to show you how it looks. I think that's the coolest thing ever. I wish she had more designers. And, um... Like the person that shared it, I asked if, you know, she updates and adds more designers frequently. And she said not really. Um, like she'll, you know, like if you want her to add someone, you can email her and ask her. And then she, you know, depending on the demand or the amount of request. And then she also has to get permission from the designer to let her have the, the images. So I'm sure there's, you know, there's quite a few um, hoops she has to jump through to get all of that taken care of, but I think it's really cool. It's a really cool um, tool, so I wanted to share that definitely. Okay, so plans. So 
work on the client piece. Um, we'll have a goal to get that done by the 15th. Um, the new Live Simply release today. She did extend the, um, like there's, I didn't realize this, but like if you finish by sometime in January because she was sick and didn't release November for a while. Um, but you basically get entered into like a giveaway. So um, I want to definitely work on that and try to, you know, get that done by by January, first week-ish, somewhere in there. Um, and then I haven't done the um, monthly magazine challenge the last few months. Like I did it in September, I think. I didn't do October or November. But um, this month's December challenge is winter wonderland. And the acrostic is snow. Um, so I decided to jump on the bandwagon with this. So, um, let me show you the pictures of these pieces. So the main piece is the, um, it's the, um, the band sampler. There's a four port series. Um, I've shown you the fall one that I've started. This is the winter one. I'm not sure how I feel about the quote. Winter brings the snow and makes our feet and fingers glow. I'm not sure about that. So I may leave the words off or may replace it with something else. But um, I definitely want to start that. And I just want to basically, my goal for the month is to get that top band completed. Because I have some other things that I want to finish as you can see down on the bottom so when I was looking for things to uh, do for this I decided I was going to make each one of my grandsons um, an ornament so I saw this little cute little snowman so it's called snowman's treat so that goes for my s and snow for the acrostic and then um the for the end, um, I saw this the nativity silhouette, which I think is you know gorgeous. I mean, come on, look at the colors. But I think they call for it to be stitched on, I think it's like a light fabric because you can see the edge there. But I have a ton of the 14 count chalkboard black from the club that I'm, you know, I mean, I have at least a whole, one whole package that hasn't even been opened um, because they just give you so much that I, you know, was able to use like previous month's pieces to do the next one on. So I think I'm just going to stitch it on that. And so then I won't have to even stitch um, the dark, you know, just leave them blank and just let the cloth show through. So I just want to try to get like, I think it's like about a thousand stitches that top part, um, just to get a start on it. And then for the O and the acrostic, um, just I mean, in the, the the acrostic is just sort of like you make it fit to what you want to stitch on. So the ho ho ho, the ho ho home ornament right here um it's got o's in it you know for the ho ho um i want to stitch this for someone and try i'm gonna try to get it finished and sent to them this year um for one of my stitchy stitchy people um and then for my other grandson i thought this was real cute um, this is called um, First Snow. So I just took the, the W from the snow for my acrostic. It has a little, um, it has beads. And then it also has a, um, a little charm right here. That I'll have to see if I can find something that'll, that'll work. 
but I thought that was real cute. So these are, I mean, pretty simple little, um, <clears throat> hopefully quick finishes that I'm planning on working on for the for this month. And that's it. So we're an hour and 20 minutes. I don't know these wonderful floss tubers like Janet Jabber. I love her. If you haven't watched her, go watch her. She's just the sweetest, the sweetest soul. But, and it's not a but, she's the sweetest soul. And she shares a lot of stuff, but her videos are like 20 minutes, 30 minutes long. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I guess I just talk really, really slowly. Um, and it just takes me a while to share what I have to say. I need to stop apologizing. It is what it is. Um, I don't know why I think every time that I'm going to get done quicker. Because I just don't. So, whatever. <laughs> um, you know, if you like shorter videos, I'm probably not the one for you. If you like longer videos where... I just kind of ramble and talk about my stitching a little too much, maybe. Then stick around. <laughs> okay, guys. As my stomach has been saying, I'm going to go grab a bite to eat and um, get some stitching in this afternoon on that client piece. Hopefully get some stitching in on my daughter's quilt. And... Um, <clears throat> Let me look at some job sites to see what's available. <sighs> yeah. So disappointing. But anyway, I hope you all um, have a great rest of the week and that you get lots of time to stitch and relax and um, spend time with family. I probably will see you before Christmas, so I'm not going to say Happy Christmas or Merry Christmas or anything yet, because um, I, I should be back on here to do another video for sure. So anyway, I love you guys, and I hope you're staying safe and well and sane. I'll see you next time. Bye.